And do to be a creative input for them? Was it hard to get a position in Kraftwerk? Um, I didn't fight it. I didn't fight for it. I didn't go for fishing, as they say. I did my job as a drummer, and uh, I knew from the beginning that it was their mothership, you know, and they decided and they uh, said everything what, what had to be done. So uh, to be with them was a good luck for me for a special time, absolutely. But I was not that, uh, it was not that um, influence, it was not that uh, passion like maybe Ralph or Florian. It's, it's, it's their baby, as I say, you know. And uh, the, first, the first time, maybe the first one or through, uh, two years, it was just money making for me. I'm, I'm, I really can't tell that uh, truly. And then uh, there came a, a kind of passion in me when, uh, when we were proud and we were handled all over the world. Of course, this fits to every young man, you know. Everyone likes that. And so you see, you are a part of it and you have de developed that kind of minimal drumming for, for what I was called by them from, from the beat band before, you know. Because they always had problems with their drummers before they were too good and they did too much training, uh, trained in, in jazz music and from other fields, you know. So that was a big problem uh, uh, for Kraftwerk as well. And they nearly lost me too. It was just a little thing that I, that I stayed or left. But, you know, it, successfully there stood that little tiny box which, uh, uh, which uh, heated my heart, you know. If that wasn't, I were not with Kraftwerk. I wouldn't play that drum machine for them. How would you describe the time between Electric Café and the Mix album? I don't know anything about it because I was not in the studio. I was, in that time, I was outside, as we say, in the underground. I had to, uh, I fulfilled a big love, probably the biggest which I had in my life then, in this time. And I traveled Europe so much as I could to see all the places again, which we had not enough time with Kraftwerk, but I had my ideas where to go and to go deeper in that culture and this culture. And uh, this was a long time my, my, uh, my, my most... Um, developing my most interest. So it was just the time when Karl told me later, Wolfgang, good that you were not here. These years were incredible for him. He told me they were, they had, they had done a big mistake from my side and Karl told me the same. They bought a synclavier. Oh God, you know what that is? You, to, to, to work with it, you, you need years to go through such a big, uh, uh, like a telephone big, the, the advice book, how, how to work with the, with, the, with the tool, with the instrument. It's one of the most complicated synthesizers of the world, and Ralph and Florian are also not the fastest ones to go through a, a technical um, Bedienungsanleitung, you know. Uh, and Carl said they had sitting for hours, for months, for years to get everything fixed and then they rebuilt the studio, they made it very new, like uh, looking like the NASA today, cli uh, climate control inside, air conditioning and uh, new synthesizers and they had more to do with uh, uh, getting in, in uh, getting the, themselves in shape to work the instruments than bring new music out and then came digital out, then came MIDI out, and then the industry exploded with new uh, systems. And they ran, suddenly they ran after it. They were not, they were not the, the foreriders, as we say in Germany, you know. And this took all the years. I, uh, Karl told me, I just was not with them. I, I just can only um, uh, recall him. And he said, uh, it's good that you were not with us. It was so boring to store everything what was uh, all the years uh, recorded uh, uh, in, in analog style to, to uh, replace them and everything into digitalized things, you know. Do you think that Ralph and Florian are bitter today? What? Are a little bit sad that they can't do music that is just as overwhelming that the music they made in the 70s? Uh, I cannot see and cannot look into them. I saw him yesterday, by the way, or no, it was the, the day, it was Friday. I had been in an electronic shop here, a new one, 
very big and elegant uh, war house on the Königsallee and went out and just, just su suddenly we went parallel, he with his little daughter and we, I think we looked at each other for a second or so and then he took his daughter, went on the other side of the street. He was afraid to see me. As a, I said, I said, I said to myself, poor boy, you could have said a good tag, maybe just good tag. But uh, he's, he's, uh, there was a time when he, there, there, he was much more into to no problems touching me because he, he really liked me. I know it. He was the one who went for me. It was not Ralf, it was more Florian, I think. But today it's just the opposite, you know. But that I can understand it depends on the book. It has to do with that, my hope, uh, maybe, wahrscheinlich. How do they live today? Do they live by their own, by, by their self, or do they live together with someone? Them? Yeah. I don't know. Because it wasn't in Ralph Lee, his, his I told you, I was never in Ireland. I, I was not in the mood to visit them, you know. I just can imagine, I can imagine that there, that there is no big difference like they used to live in earlier time. Because people in these years do not change too much. They get a bit more stupid, maybe more, a, a bit more isolated, a bit more uh, uh, crazy if, if they live on their own. I, I think Ralph is maybe married at the moment, or he went to. He told me something in 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 sixty in ninety six on on the restaurant which I told you. Um, but this is not important. I think Florian has a sis, uh, has a daughter, a little one, beautiful. I think she was six or seven years old. But they, are they ordinary people, or are they a little bit crazy? You know. You must be a little bit crazy if you do things like that. If you are normal, you, you wouldn't do uh, crazy things. Normal people do normal things. It's good if you are an artist that you are a bit crazy or even a bit more, you know. The more crazy you are, the more crazy things come out of his brain or her brain. And uh, other people which are, which are average, they like crazy things, different things because uh, sometimes they have it also inside of themselves, but they are afraid to, to, to make crazy things. Yes. And so they need the artist to, make, to, to, to prepare it, to make it for them, to say, you can do that or that or listen to that. And, you know. What happened concretely the day you left Kraftwerk? It was not just one day, as I told you. It was just that I went less and less to the studio until I went not longer to the studio. And then I met some friends which had a furniture design uh, atelier and I worked with them. What, what I originally was trained as a carpet maker, carpet maker and uh, furniture maker and uh, things like that. And I worked with them. Suddenly I was a, a furniture designer and I loved that for some years as well. I didn't think for music again, generally not. Why do you think Kraftwerk is so hugely influential today? Yes, it depends on this style of music, which so much um, in, uh, invited other bands to do something similar. It spread a whole new sound over the world. We didn't know that by the time, you can imagine, but today we know. People tell us and we can listen to the sounds which are always used in other groups, even today in productions, I can hear every little Kraftwerk sound which is used or which is uh, uh, prepared to sound like it, you know, in, 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 in any other production. And sometimes it sounds really funny. Can you give any examples? Not so much at the moment, you know. You can hear it in every average uh, uh, modern production, uh, pop production. There is something, a little bit Kraftwerk Janische elements inside, you know. I mean, even Madonna's music. Do you, yeah. do you? Mm -hmm. The last album was very good. She had a an, an very good uh, producer, I think. That that uh, was it William Orbit. Yeah, no, it was a, a, a French guy called Mirva, Mirva. Uh -huh. But um, <laughs> do you get like letters from famous mm -hmm. artists thanking you for giving you the influence? No, not from artists. Not only from fans. Okay. I think we have to go out outside soon. Just see that we have checked all the questions mm -hmm. that I have to, to ask you. How long does your machine run? Forever. Forever. <laughs> <coughs>
nice evening. I think we I think we could leave. I think we got out to uh, do you do you wish that you had a contact that you had a contact with Ralph and Florian? No. Why could you do me one? <laughs> no. <laughs> have you tried to contact them anywhere? I have through the record company. I don't know how and what did they tell you? They didn't tell me anything. <laughs> I didn't give an answer. Mm, I thought so. My friend asked me today, why does he not ask Ralph and Florian? I said, he won't get in contact to them. I think the first thing he would uh, try to contact the EMI and they would say, sorry, we can't help you. That's the way. They don't keep persons, they don't let anyone uh, on their surface. I, I think this is good for them. I appreciate for them. It's their style and it's their um, idea of being isolated and so this is maybe just the reason why they can live on their own not so much recognized by people because of course most people uh, which like Kraftwerk know how they look like but they look uh, every every half year they look different I know Florian likes to uh, change his shape the whole shape he, he changes cars every three months, I think, and the whole outfit, outfit and uh, haircut and fa fashion, clothes, what, what he wears. And Ralph, not so much, but Florian, he's, he's really a dress man, you know. But what do you try to obtain is some kind of mis mystic about themselves. Yeah. Do you think that maybe you, now when you wrote this book, have, have uh, this mystique is a little bit gone? Uh, that could be, yes. But not too much, because um, I didn't, mostly I didn't go too much in, into, into privately things, you know. Uh, the, the book is uh, generally written about my whole uh, life, my own life. It's a book about Wolfgang, and Kraftwerk is a part of Wolfgang, of course. And, uh, Kraft, and Wolfgang is also a part of Kraftwerk. But I think Kraftwerk is more a, a part of me than I am a part of Kraftwerk. You know what I mean with that? for the whole thing, what they gave to me, until the point that I didn't like them anyway, because today I wouldn't go to them and, 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 and I even don't like their behavior, what they do to other people, how they handle artists and colleagues. This is not my style. This is something uh, which I learned later, uh, that they have to go to, to school again to learn a little bit. And artistically, they couldn't teach me anything new today. There I had to go different ways. And this was, uh, as I told you before, my Yamo project is different from that. And I, I learn by younger people with them, with which I work today. They learn from me, I learn from them. This is an open project, which I like, which is not uh, locked behind thick metal doors. You know, it's absolutely open, it's free, and it's uh, full of fun and uh, humanity. Thank you very much. Then we... Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, from Düsseldorf, Musiksoldat. Musik 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 Musik